Hi, I'm the Cat Toy Lady. And today is another live. Um, it's a little bit easier for me to do right now. Um, I'll talk about the health issues going on in just a little bit, kind of an update to them of the funness that they are. Um, but today I am making a toy that you can use a sewing machine, you can hand sew, or you can even use the uh, stuff for making uh, soulless seaming. I, I forgot what it's actually called, bias tape. Oh, that's the name of it. Um, that you can iron on. Basically, it sticks two pieces of fabric together. So you can just iron this together if you wanted to. Um, I'd love to say that I've made this toy before. It's in my head. Can't be that hard. But n normally on some of the basic toys, not the bigger ones, because those are just on a whim, um, normally I kind of do a practice run so I know exactly how to do it and I can explain it seamlessly. That's not happening right now. Again, the health reasons, we're just gonna see what happens. It can't turn out that bad, I'm thinking. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna let a few people join us. I'm gonna go ahead and get connected on my end so I can read your text um, or what's in the chat. And let me find myself on here, you know. And again, if you haven't seen one of my lives before, I'm blind. I can't read the little writing that's that far away from me that's up on the screen. That's just not going to happen. And, oh, Essie, hello. Um, if I remember right, Essie, you're from the Netherlands? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what you write back. Um move my sewing basket out of the way. My craziness that is my sewing basket. Um, well, part of it. This is my downstairs one for down in the studio. Then I have the little cute little thing that sits upstairs. But um, So today is a catnip pouch and I just <laughs> realized I did a ditz move. And I have not pulled out my catnip. Um, and I can't <laughs> think of where I put it. You know, um, <laughs> yes, Essie is from the Netherlands. Um, things have been a bit chaotic around here. Um, I am going to get to showing you the toy in just a second, but if you hear banging and clacking and maybe a saw going on, um, I, on a whim, found a RV that we are going to use to travel for some of my husband's YouTube stuff. Um, I Never buy an RV that's been through a tornado. I'm just saying, it was super cheap. It was only like $900 uh, for a 24 foot long RV that just had a little bit of damage. Turned out the entire 24 foot side of it was ruined. Like the wooden side is mush and you can like, I'm saying like a lot, you can crumble it with your hands. It's disgusting. He's working on fixing it. I've already redone the inside partly. Um, it's going to get some kitty makeovers because this summer when we leave for long periods of time the cats are coming with us and I have been planning how to make a little catio for them. I have a son that is opening the door. I'm live honey. <laughs> he says hello <laughs> my little six-year-old. Um, so I'm going to okay go get some water. <laughs> Um, but I need to put scratchers in the, uh, RV. I need to make, uh, I told you I want to make a catio. I had this scaredy cat that is scared to death of my husband and basically life, uh, but loves myself and my daughter as long as it's nighttime. Um, so I need to make a safe hidey hole for him that we can easily access because uh, there's parts of the RV that you could open up, but you can't get to it if something happens. So if he gets sick, I can't pull him out. Um, so I have to be a little creative and make a way to be able to ha give him a nice safe sp spot, figure out where to put the litter box. I think it's going to be in the bath or like the shower. It has kind of a bathtub esque to it. Um, Oh, Sam, Sam the Adventure Man. Thank you for joining me. He's one of the fellow YouTubers that does what my husband does, which is diving. And Sam is also like a 
oh, I forgot the exact name for it. He's one of the ones when you're in the ocean and you have an accident and your boat starts to sink, he goes and saves your butt. Um, along with doing some of the other adventure stuff, um, scuba diving and pulling cars out, really cool channel. Um, check them out. And Rescue Captain, that is the exact name of it. Hi. And he squids and <laughs> he knows lots of different stuff. Um, and Reiki Lady is here, one of my original subscribers. So let me get started. Just so you know, what I'm basing everything off of today is my daughter's favorite book. Um, I'm surprised this thing isn't more beat up than <laughs> it is. She has slept with it under her pillow. It was a Halloween costume for school because you could only be a book character. So I made her into the Christmas kitten. Um, it is a very cute book all about a kitten that wishes for all the homeless kitties in the world to be adopted. And Santa ends up delivering all the cats to new homes. So it is super cute. I highly recommend it. It's on Amazon by Jessica Spawn. Um, love, love, love this book. You can still get it because remember Amazon does like the day book delivery or sometimes it takes two days, but usually it's like one day for a book. Um, highly recommend this book. Go get it. It's very cute. Every kid will love it. It helped my daughter learn to read because she wanted to be able to learn bigger words. So I am basing today's project off the Christmas kitten. So you can kind of see I found the Christmas kitten on her website all cut out and I put it into just one of those little apps that you can, it's kind of like Photoshop but for dummies, uh, Canvas, Canva, sorry. Canva. Uh, Canvas is the program my kids use for school. Um, and I just put it on what should be a sheet of paper that size and then made four copies, reversed two of them. It's all really easy to do in there. It tells you how. And then I printed it. And what I printed it on is photo paper. I got this at the craft store. Um, it's cotton. It has a weird hard back to it. I guess you could say that way it can feed through the printer, but it peels right off of it. But if you're going to do any cutting on it, leave it on that backing until you're done cutting and then peel it off. It makes it so much easier. And let me think about where I put the catnip. <laughs> Give me one second. Just listen to me do a little song and dance off the screen. La da da da. -da. Who forgets their catnip? I mean, really. Only I could do that right now. Okay. It's one of those days, you know? If need be, I'm going to show you how to stuff it like a pillow. And then uh, you can just imagine you're stuffing it with catnip. That might work. Let's see, I have another bin down here of weird stuff. Let's see if I have catnip in here. I have paint. Oh, so I can show you, these are what we're making, these little pillows. I made, and then could not find a way to track them down, these cute little pillows that are full of catnip for Jonathan from Queer Eye. Uh, you know the fat vibe. I love him so much and I was trying to, he has a cat obsession. I was trying to be able to send these to him, but I could not find a way to mail to him. So if someone comes across his P.O. box, you let me know. I'm telling you. I got lots of stuff for him. Oh, see, here's another one I made for him. Pride. <laughs> and it's 100% catnip inside. All right. Well, since that's not going to work for catnip, who loses their catnip when they're going live? I mean, it's just, it's my day, isn't it? But I have stuffing. There we go. <laughs> so, um,. Again, my husband, if you hear banging and clanging and all that, is working on the RV outside. It is what it is. 
I have used every little bit of energy I have with my kidney issues going on to help with the RV and I'm kind of just so forgive me today but lives are always interesting like that aren't they especially when you don't know if you have scissors <laughs> oh I do you'd think I'd prepare a little bit better huh yeah it didn't happen today but so what I am doing is like I said I went ahead and printed out what I want to make a kitty cat pillow out of move everything out of the way and what I'm going to do is go ahead and you can actually use a cutter for a straight edge and I'm going to cut it down the middle of the two kitties just nice and easy and then I'm gonna cut them again this just gives a straighter line and less chance of unraveling than using scissors for this part so just nice and easy you can use scissors you don't have to have a fancy little cutter it just makes things a little easier you hear them soft yay <laughs> but the RV's getting done that's what matters before I have a flood that runs through it again because it's missing part of the side. But we'll get on to that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and match up two of my pieces that are back or are opposite of each other. And I'm going to go ahead and peel them off. Do, 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 do. Oh, yep, Sam Sam's running away. But that's okay we still love you hopefully I got a chance to see you guys in January unless my husband has to go alone and I happen to have a kidney taken out well, again we'll get to that in a minute um, so what I'm going to do is take the fabric and put them facing each other kind of match up your images because it is semi see-through you can see even on the reverse that they match and then I'm going to zip around three sides of them with the sewing machine nothing fancy you could hand stitch it and go around beautifully or if you're that skilled at sewing you can go around beautifully and make a little cat shaped uh, toy my skills are not that good so I'm just going to run it through pray that my sewing machine is still set up well and doesn't try to eat the fabric because that has happened before. There we go. No fabric eating happening. Nice straight line. Pick up. Go the other way. And if it doesn't come out perfectly squared, I have to get that perfectly. <laughs> I lost my mind. Um, it's okay. Your cat's not going to notice. If you are giving it as a gift, yes, um, definitely make this look a little prettier. Um, so maybe the first one that you try is going to be for your cat. That way it doesn't matter if it's not the best looking. And then it's just like making a little mini pillow is what we're doing. We're gonna trim off the excess. Doo -doo. Flip it inside out like a pillowcase. I have a little trick that I do that I use my scissors to pop up in the corners instead of trying to struggle with my own fat, chunky, nub fingers. And make a corner. And then make another corner. There we go. So have a little pouch that is the Christmas kitten you could if you had catnip um, goodness I can't believe <laughs> I lost my catnip that quickly I have a big tub of it there's RV stuff in my space right now there's so much junk um, <laughs> if you saw in the cat tree where I made the Christmas tree. There is lots of stuff in my space at the moment. Um, I just don't have the oomph to fix it. So, you're lucky you're getting a video today, to be honest. So 
So I'm just going to take my stuffing. And what you could do, since I'm just doing catnip, is you can take crinkle paper, which I happen to have in the pile on the floor. You can take the cellophane that they use for making gift bags that is like the heat shrink or you can take tissue paper that's the aluminum foil looking type that you hear crinkle so well. I'm going to make a bigger piece because I want, since it's green on the inside and silver on the back, I am going to fold it that way you can't see the green so easily on the inside and I'm just going to stuff it in going down one side of it make a crinkle toy. My big girl loves crinkle toys. She gets her big 17 pound butt. I'll kind of kill it even though they're small. Okay. Nice and crinkly. And then we just tuck in the top. You can hand sew this if you want. It makes it much prettier, but I am just going to zip across the top. Do do. Nice and easy, no fuss. I do suggest lock stitches. That's where you double back on yourself on the ends, just because it's going to a kitty cat to try to kill. There we go. And then snip away the extra material. So now you can see a personalized cat toy. You can print whatever you want on here. It can have someone's name. It can have a theme. It can be a birthday. Like, ooh, every year for your cat, you could make one that says one year, two year, three year, five months, six months, you know, that type of thing. Um, when you take the pictures, because everyone likes to document like we do for babies, because we're special like that, right? Um, and especially for kittens, you want it to be crinkly and not catnip because catnip does not work on a cat until they hit hormonal maturity, which usually I just round it up to about a year of age. Um, some cats can hit that earlier. Some cats kind of hit it a little later. It might be a year and a half, but we have a cute little Christmas kitty, Christmas kitten, crinkle toy. Your cat's going to love to be able to bite into it. And the neat thing about using cotton is you wouldn't think if you've ever like tested cat toys in your mouth and I have cat hair amazingly on my eyelash. Um, if you put things in your mouth and they have a funky texture, usually your cat isn't going to like it. Cats actually really like the texture of just plain cotton to lick on. It's satisfying for some reason. I don't know what it is. I've had multiple cats that like just sit there with catnip toys that are filled like this. Just sit there and lick forever until the thing is soggy. So, but I did notice my big girl will lick crinkle toys the same way. And I think it's the cotton that I use in them. So, you know, keep cotton in mind. And this is 100% cotton, popped in cotton. So we have a cute little Christmas kitten. I should send this to the author of the book. She has three kitties, I believe. So on to some other stuff to talk about. I wanted to, oh, one, show you my cool shirt. It's a cat playing a flute. And if you see the end of the ear has been nipped, um, that is a sign of trap and neuter, trap neuter release TNR. Um, so yeah, I thought that was cool for the shirt. It is from Cat High. I have another picture of hers. cat playing drums. She does a lot of musical themed cat stuff if you couldn't tell. Um, and there's a cute little mouse. And it is, let's see if I can do this without showing you my fat rolls. Ooh, no, I can't. Cat, hi. Like, hi. Um, really cute artist. You can find her on Etsy. And I think she might have her own website. You can order shirts. Um, she has lots of different types of shirts super cute lover so my suggestions this week of cat stuff is cat high and the christmas kitten by jessica spawn on amazon 
Um, and it's one of those books that has that weird rubbery feel to it, that really soft, velvety book. So it's satisfying to hold while you're reading. It doesn't get all slimy in your hands. Um, the artwork is amazing in it. Very good theme. And like I said, it became my daughter's book, even not at Christmas time. I can't tell if it's cat hair floating around. Imagine that. Or this stuff, because this stuff goes everywhere. And, oh, I forgot to tell you, you can sew into the top of it before, let's see. So when it's like this, and you put your two pieces together, where they're uh, faces facing each other, before you actually get to that, put Velcro, a line, sew it on, and sew it on, on the back sides. And then go ahead and zip. Actually, let's just do it real quick. I say that. It's not hard, but you can make a refillable catnip toy. Because catnip does go bad or lose its oomph. Um, because what attracts cats is actually an oil that's in the leaves. You can put it in the microwave as long as there's no metal or foil, like this stuff, um, in the toy. You can put it in the microwave for five seconds and it re-releases some of the oil that's trapped inside. That can be very, very handy when you have that favorite toy that just stinks now, doesn't do much, but they still love the toy. All right, so I'm just gonna measure across how big it is. Do, 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 do. Like I said, very quick toy to make. So across the top, I am just going to line this up. I'm going to fold over. And I know people love to pin things. I am not a pinner. I don't pin to save my life. I squish it and hope it stays in place. Um, I might have to pin this. I don't like pinning. I don't know why. I'm that person that always somehow gets my pin stuck in my sewing machine. Um, I'm not a seamstress. I do not claim to be. I am a lucky beginner that somehow pull, pulls things off. Um, back in high school, I actually made a very, uh, quite a few very large, like Victorian dresses, 1920 drawing, flapper girl dresses, dresses for a midsummer night. And I have no idea how I actually pulled them off. I was using patterns, but I look back thinking, how the heck did I do that? So I'm going to trim, put the other one on real quick, same way. So I'm just folding over the edge, just going ahead and doing that fold that I did at the end, taking the extra fluff off. So folding it over and then sticking this on top. Easier said than done when you're holding it in the air. Okay. And pretend I'm talking and being really amusing right now. I have not looked at my phone for a bit, so I have no idea what the chat says. Okay, there we go. And my sewing machine is not a very high powered one, not best oomph, but it still can go through Velcro. Let me turn my phone back on since it decided to turn itself off and see, see what I'm saying over here. Let's see. And <laughs> your sister got your sewing machine, huh? Yeah, this is just the cheapest one I could find on Amazon just about. I went to the craft store. I was going to buy one of the really good Singer sewing machines. And the uh, guy behind the counter was like, you don't want this. And of course, the craft guy sees me a lot. Um, I've been going in there for years. 
Um, and he's like, the newer singers that were out at the time, he's like, their crap is going to break on you immediately. He's like, go find a brother. The cheapest one you can find is still going to be better than uh, one of the good ones of any of the ones that the craft store sells. I was like, okay. And they had stopped carrying brother. So that's why he's telling me to go online. So I have my Velcro that is on both the tops. Now I can go ahead and put them facing each other, making sure that the top lines up. I'm going to put everything mirror image facing itself. And then I'm just going to zip around the sides like I did with the other one. Hope the sewing machine doesn't eat it. For some reason, I've had problems with the sewing machine when I first get started. Eats my fabric. Um, does not make me happy, of course. And like I said, I'm a beginner that tries to take on too much, so I don't know if it's the fabric or my sewing machine, but we make it work. Let's get through this bad boy. Put some speed on, huh? There we go. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So, here it is. Ah, I got strings everywhere. Let me kind of show you. See, there's Velcro on both sides. I always drop stuff on lives. Okay. Velcro, both sides. Flip it inside out. And, of course, this is where I usually use my scissors to fluff out the corners because I have chunky fingers and I've got rounded edges. There we go. And again, this is great so you can make a refillable uh, catnip toy. And you can do this in any size. You don't have to do it as big as I have or as little. You can do long ones if that make kick pillows. But now, see the top? It just gets velcroed together. And it makes the cutest little catnip pouch. And you can put pure catnip in here, drive them nuts. Let's see as I'm walking back if I can find my catnip. Oh my god. Who loses an entire jug of catnip? Oh, I found it. <laughs> Don't mind me being a nut today. I'm special. I have the worst freaking headache. I keep messing this up too. Yeah, if you're wondering, my backdrop is just shower curtains from the dollar store. Real creative. Real expensive. I love the dollar store. Okay, so open your catnip. I will warn you, the Smarty Cat brand has a tendency of having a lot of sticks in it. A lot of sticks. I have taken them out, or at least the bigger ones, out of this container already. And then I'm just going to pour what's left in my pouch. Close it up. Press really well, that way the Velcro holds. And then you have a 100% catnip toy. You can buy the really good stuff. You can add a little bit of silver vine to the catnip because you can't put all silver vine in here. That silver vine, only a pinch is what you need for a dose. Um, by the way, silver vine is like the best cat uh, attractant that there is. Almost 70% of cats respond to it versus catnip only just over like, I think it's a third, half cat, something like that. I forgot my statistics at this point. Um, I no longer have to work in the business where I had to memorize that stuff. So, yay! No longer working for the man. Just working here. Yay! <laughs> and of course, I got stuff on my lips. Okay. Yeah. So, and I always say the dollar store. It's the Dollar Tree that I found that I get everything at. Um, the mats here, the backdrop, the Velcro. Um... Yeah, I'm a junkie. Um, I used to make fun of people that went to the Dollar Tree, and now I'm one of them. Um, I, I was raised a bit of a snob, I'll admit it. And, uh, yeah, well, I grew up in real life without Grandpa's money. <laughs> After uh, he passed, 
and the world changed. <laughs> but let me talk to you about what's going on besides whatever is stuck in my eyelashes because it's kidding me. Well, health wise, yes, I'm only going to be putting out a video probably every two weeks right now. Um, to be honest, the only reason I'm really putting out videos is, um, well, one, YouTube hates when you skip weeks and I'm doing that anyway, so that's happening. But I, being the weird creative mind that I am, I don't feel right if I'm not being creative in some way, doing something. Um, I don't necessarily have to be making videos and talking to you all, but I love it. Um, I just have to be doing something creative or I just get all funky. Um, so yeah, I'm one of those weird creative people that have to be building and making and I have so many ideas, um, for when I, well, I'll, I'll let you know, I'm most likely getting my kidney removed is the way it's looking at the moment. Um, I had a stint put in and because my ureter was blocked. So it's like this little curly cue thing that sits in your kidney and then goes through that straw that drains your kidney called the ureter and then curls back up in your bladder. I had that for three weeks. Um, they told me, you know, let us know if you have any pain or, um, any side effects after it comes out or if you think for some reason it, it reblocked. Um, I had been having migraines for almost a year and it turned out that we, when they put in the scent, the migraines went away immediately. Um, so it was believed that my kidney had probably been blocked about a year and the migraines themselves were being caused by my kidney. Um, apparently that's not uncommon. So I have the stint removed and that night, one o'clock in the morning, I wake up to a migraine and <laughs> I woke up because I was having a dream that I was being stabbed to death in my side. Um, it turned out that was my ureter was hurting. Um, and that's when my kidney probably reblocked. Yay! Um, the worse I feel, the more sarcastic I get too, by the way. <laughs> my doctors love it. Um, so yeah, that night I started back with the migraines and I can't take the same migraine medication now. Now that they know that my kidney's blocked, that medication, it's like a blood pressure medication. Um, it was the only thing that they found that actually helped with my migraines. I can't take it. Well, I can only take a very low amount of it because you have to slowly wean yourself off. Um, but I can't come off of it completely because I basically I can't see. I get those migraines where you have these weird little lines through your eyes and I lose vision. I can't live that way. Um, so I'm on a very low dose. So I just walk around feeling like I have an electric helmet on where it's just frying my head slightly. Um, and my eyeballs want to pop out and my sinuses hurt and like the whole, it just sucks. Um, so I'm on a very, very low dose just so I can function and talk to people, be a mom, you know, cook dinner, pee, <laughs> get up to pee. It's amazing when you can't see all of a sudden how hard things become. <laughs> but, uh, so the Yerda reblocked on Tuesday this week. I have another MAG3 study. Basically, it shows how well your kidney's draining. Um, and basically, they're just trying to see if it's a full blockage so far or partial. They did do an ultrasound of the kidney and the ureter, and my ureter was blowing up like a balloon. Um, so not good. Not good at all. And so they know that there's a blockage down below, but they're not sure if any urine's getting through, and that's what they're trying to find out. The doctor wants me to have uh, an evaluation with one of the big wig specialists that can replace the ureter itself if the kidney's fine. Um, it depends on how well in the MAG3 study that the kidney's even trying to, to function. Um, so I have to have some tests to find out if 
the kidney is even salvageable. If it's not, then we just remove the kidney. Um, if it is salvageable, um, he's wanting me to meet the specialist and talk about, am I a candidate for getting a new ureter? And the new ureter, they either use part of your cheek and they think because the entire thing has to be replaced, that might not be an option, or they use your intestines. Um, and because I make so much scar tissue and scar tissue is why my ureter blocked in the first place after my appendix ruptured, um, they don't know if I'm even a good candidate for, um, getting a new ureter. Um, my body, I have weird autoimmune diseases and, um, it may not be an option in the first place, even if the kidney is good. Um, but he wants me to see the specialist. The catch is the specialist is booked out by five weeks. It'll be the, going into the last week of January by the time he can see me. It's like the 19th or something. Um, which kind of sucks when you're living in pain. Um, and there's not a lot of medication. Tylenol does diddly for ureter, kidney, and head pain. It just barely takes the edge off. Um, so yeah, yeah, I sound like a downer at the moment, but that's what I'm facing is, um, most likely it, I have a feeling it's going to be, let's pull the kidney out just because of my other issues. Um, so yeah, yeah. The test on Tuesday will tell if we go ahead and do that surgery or if we wait and I do see that other specialist. Um, if it weren't for the other medical issues, losing a kidney is not a big deal. But because I do have so many specialists to me, um, it does put me at risk of having to get a new kidney one day because this one might not last all that long either. Um, so who knows? Uh, either way, not too fun. And so videos are going to be sporadic. I have so many cool big ones I want to do. I have two different cat wheels, actually three now, because someone gave me an idea. My treadmill, someone wanted to know if I could find a way to make it fold up flat. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> um, so I have the treadmill I wanna do. I wanna do my big treadmill, uh, or not treadmill, uh, cat wheel, the one that if you've seen the blue one, I want to one, Make sure I don't give it to someone who won't give me a video of their cat on it. Never heard from the dude again. Um, but I want to be able to make that out of a different material and see how it works. Um, one that can be used by shelters and still sterilize. You know the plastic corrugated cardboard? It's the one that if you've seen my Christmas tree that I made this year, it's that material. It's a, it looks like big plastic cardboard. I want to make a cat running wheel out of that. Um, it's going to be a little tricky because I want to use non-toxic glues, stuff like that. There's not a lot of things that bond plastic that's non-toxic and holds and works. Um, but I want them to have something that they can wipe down and sterilize. Um, so that way these shelters can make their own for a fraction of a cost. And these cats that are cooped up in these shelters have more of an outlet. Um, I'll probably end up giving mine to, if you've ever heard of Good Muse, Jackson Galaxy has been there a ton of times, and Pete the Cat, that artist actually does their logo. Um, yeah, good, good, good open room shelter. Um, love what they do, and I want to be able to give my cat wheel to them, honestly. So I want to do that one, and then because so many people did not understand the concept of, I wanted to see if it was even possible to make a cat wheel out of Dollar Tree material. Um, I just made a little 30 inch one, just to see if it could be done. People aren't watching the video and hearing that part. So there, I'm getting, oh my God, every week, a message saying I'm going to end up paralyzing a cat by putting it on a 30 inch wheel, that their spines are going to be compressed and, Oh my God, there was so much to it. Um, I'm gonna decapitate cats too. 
if they actually watch the video, they saw that the bar in front is actually six inches away from the blades that go around that help support it. Um, but they're just looking at a picture that looks straight on, so they can't tell that, and they're judging even though they're being stupid. And I get weekly, sometimes more than once a week, comments on this video about how I'm going to end up killing a cat. So I want to show that it can be done on a larger scale. It's not that much harder to go from 30 inches to like 48 inches, make it four feet. And I'm gonna use Dollar Tree material and as a follow-up to that video. And yes, I swear to God, I will get a cat, even if it's my cat walking with a piece of chicken. Cause that, if you see my treadmill video, that's the only way the girl moves on anything is bribery. Um, she's quite lazy when it comes to treadmills and that type of thing. And she loves cat toys, like the wand ones, but she only likes to launch herself through the air. I'm trying to put one of those on the toy or on the treadmill to make her walk doesn't work. She just looks at it like I'm not getting on it. Um, so yeah, yeah. Now that is my update for everything. I have a lot of neat things that I want to be able to show you, but I have to wait till I have some oomph for that. I'm going to go probably curl up in a little ball after this. <laughs> um, you can even tell I'm losing my oomph that I normally have. Um, oh, you know how it feels to have migraines. Yeah, they suck. <laughs> I used to work with a girl at the cat clinic that got migraines and every once in a while I'd be annoyed by them because she'd have to go lay down while working. I'm sorry. I get it now. I want to go lay down too. And being around cats and the really bright lights and the surgery and yeah, that would suck. Um, so people that work with migraines and their co-workers scoff at them. I'm sorry. My bad. I apologize. Um, this cat is actually really strong. I can smell it. So that is it. Check out Cat High, C-A-T dash H-I. And The Christmas Kitten by Jessica Spawn. And it's on Amazon. I think it's $13, $15, something like that. I probably should check the price. I can put the link below afterwards. Um, I do highly recommend this book as I'm flipping through for myself to see and not you. But very good artwork. The, my daughter just loves this book. Um, and yes, thank you for joining me today. And I'm going to keep putting out videos every couple weeks probably just because, like I said, my mind goes nuts if I don't. Um, and there'll be little stuff, nothing big, even though I really have some big stuff I want to do. But till then, maybe uh, next week I'll do some type of New Year, or two weeks, I'll do some type of New Year's themed toy. Um, but till then, thank you so much for joining me. Please, please, please go make your cat some toys or give a gift to a kitty cat. Personalize it however you want. Printable paper or printable fabric is your best friend for these things. So I love y'all. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you soon. Now go make your cat some toys. <laughs>